Griggstown Chicken Channel. Griggstown Chicken Channel. Welcome to Griggstown Chicken Channel. Welcome to Griggstown Quail Farm and Market. And this is a new chicken channel. My name's George Root, I'm the owner. I started this company in about 1975. Uh, we raised everything that has feathers, and we still do. Our biggest thing right now is our farm market. Everything from our farm goes into our store out front here. Uh, we try to push the store a little bit more than the wholesale business, and um, we process birds fresh every day in our USDA shop. And my new baby is this kitchen right here. We started this kitchen about six years ago. This is a 5,000 square foot kitchen. It makes everything from pot pies right through the sausage line. That's what we do for a living. Seven days a week, 12 hours a day. This is Chris Albrecht, a famous chef that I've known for years. Welcome to my world, bud. Thank you, pleasure. Thanks for having me. Do what you gotta do, man, because I know you're gonna do it right. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for uh, you know, having us in here and uh, uh, growing these great birds for us. Thank you for coming. Welcome to the Griggstown Chicken Channel. My name is Chris Albrecht and I'm the executive chef of the Ryland Inn in White House Station, New Jersey. Uh, I've been cooking professionally for over 25 years and I'm absolutely excited to have this opportunity to cook some chicken for you tonight. My cooking passion comes from uh, really, really the farm and I've learned over the years that in order to make great food, you have to have great ingredients. And great ingredients start with great soil. So, when we think about flavorful food, inevitably we have to think about the soil. We have to think about where this food comes from and how it was raised. My dish tonight is really a compilation of winter ingredients that are very expressive with flavor, have a great texture, and are going to be great together when they're braised in this classic chicken dish. So, I've been cooking for about 25 years. I started cooking when I was 17 down the shore in New Jersey. My first job was actually as a dishwasher and I advanced quickly into a uh, lobster cook. I can remember nights standing around a boiling, steaming lobster kettle, 80 gallons full, putting in hundreds of lobsters. That seems a long way away now. Here we are at the Griggstown Chicken Farm. Gonna cook some chicken tonight. So I've selected a recipe tonight for you, Coco Van. This is a classic chicken recipe that really is about as rustic as it gets. Coco Van, one of the great things about that recipe is that there are as many versions of the recipe as there are households in France. This recipe was really made popular by Julia Child back in the 60s, well, maybe early 70s. But nonetheless, this dish can be reinvented time after time using fresh local seasonal ingredients. Tonight we have some great root vegetables. Here we are in the middle of winter. So we have some great root vegetables to accompany this dish alongside the classic onions, bacon, and mushrooms. One thing that's interesting about Coco Van is that in most recipes, uh, you'll see the use of red wine. And that's what we're going to use tonight, red wine. Even if you were to make this dish in the summer, warm spices like nutmeg and cinnamon would really warm the dish up. We're actually gonna use some of those spices this evening. I've got cinnamon bark, fennel, pe or fennel seed, one of my favorite spices, pink peppercorns, some good paprika, a little bit of coriander, and those are just the spices we have uh, waiting for this dish tonight. It's, it's important to know a little bit more about me, especially as it relates to vegetables. As much as I love George and chicken, I love my vegetables too. So it's not surprising that I have some really fine baby carrots with us tonight. Really little young baby carrots. We have some baby fennel with us tonight as well. <laughs> Beautiful little fennel. Some pearl onions. Uh, you can find red pearl onions. These happen to be white pearl onions. We also have some scarlet turnips. These with the green still on. And one of my favorite ingredients, kale. We already know this is a wintertime dish, and kale in the wintertime is exceptionally sweet and rich. And so I felt it, with the braise of this dish that the kale would be a, a welcome, hearty compliment. No dish that I prepare 
would be complete without lots of fresh herbs. Tonight we have thyme, marjoram, sage, parsley, and even some fresh bay leaves. So I'm excited to be cooking Coco Vaughn for you tonight. Coco Vaughn is a very special dish. It's both rustic and versatile. It's rustic in the sense that there are as many versions of this dish as there are households in France. But here, in central New Jersey, we take the inspiration of our seasons. We take the sensibility of the French and apply it to the ingredients that we have that are special today. Ingredients that are flavorful, that have texture, that have color, that will really supplement this dish. This is a dish that would otherwise have been made by peasants in France. Coco Van was traditionally made with chicken, male chicken, that would have been tough and required hours upon hours of cooking to become tender. Tonight we have young chickens. So we're going to do two different preparations that take advantage of the different types of meat within the chicken. We're going to do one preparation, a classic Coco Van preparation, that's going to revolve around the dark meat, the thigh, the leg. Then we're going to do another preparation that revolves more around the tender white meat that doesn't need as long of a cooking time to become flavorful and tender. At the Ryland Inn, whether you're there for a special occasion or a Friday night a la carte dining experience, we start with great ingredients. We source locally, we look to great producers like Rickstown Farm and other farmers to find flavorful produce, meat, and fish for you to enjoy anytime. One of the amazing things about the Ryland Inn is that there's so many unique dining experiences. Whether you're there for a wedding, or a private party, or an incredible over-the-top engagement in the chef's room, we are there to have a fantastic experience and a memorable experience to make memories. There's no better time to come to the Ryland Inn now and enjoy all the bounty that we have to offer for the fall and winter harvests. So the secret to this dish is long, slow cooking. Flavor is developed over time. The tenderness of the chicken will be developed over time. And so if we take the time, no pun intended, to cook the chicken and incorporate amazing spices found from around the world, the depth of flavor, the layering of flavor, will be incredibly complex yet approachable. One of the best things about cooking is communicating through flavor. It's only with the best ingredients that you can obtain the best flavor. So for me in my career, it's now no longer about finding a carrot. It's about a finding a carrot that has incredible flavor. And the correlation between flavor and nutrition has never been stronger. When we bite into an ingredient that tastes great, this flavor is telling our body that it's not only flavorful, but it's nutritious as well. Over the last 25 years of my career, I've cooked inside of New Jersey, DC, Las Vegas, New York, and I've always come back to New Jersey. I think the best ingredients, frankly, are in New Jersey. Certainly the best people and easily the best farmers. So it's a pleasure to always come back to New Jersey and use the ingredients that are local, seasonal, right here in central New Jersey. Cooking local has always been a passion of mine, but now we can find these ingredients right in our backyard. Coco Vaughn, try this amazing dish. For a limited time, the Greekstown Farm Kitchen is offering our version of Coco Vaughn, as taught by Julia Child. Order your servings at 908-359-5218, extension 2. Call us and place your order before Tuesday, February 28th for pickup on Saturday, March 4th or Sunday, March 5th. Call us at 908-359-5218, extension 2. What I'm peeling here are uh, little baby carrots. Um, this time of year, the carrots are very, very sweet. Uh, anytime a vegetable's been in the ground when you've had a frost, it's gonna be sweeter than any other time of the year. The fact that these are young carrots makes them tender. And what I like about these carrots also is their size in proportion to the dish. We have approximately four pound chickens. So a chicken of four pounds would be good for two people. So when I think about the vegetables that I have going into this dish, I think about the vegetables for two people. You can easily add more vegetables uh, to extend this dish and make it more about the vegetables really than about the chicken. But in this case, we wanna have a nice accompaniment of vegetables. These are some scarlet turnips. 
Turnips in general are a great winter vegetable. They have a real unique earthy flavor. And when they're this small, they're nice and tender. All of the stem is actually edible on the turnip, but I think for the sake of presentation, we're gonna leave about three quarters of an inch of the stem on there. Turnips this young, you don't have to peel them. Uh, their skin is where a lot of the color is. In fact, if I cut one of these in half, maybe we'll do that. You'll notice that the color is really just in the exterior of the turnip. A real nice earthy flavor. Complement the chicken red wine real well. One of the nice things about turnips is that they have greens. And while these greens are a little wilted, uh, they're still going to make a great accompaniment to this uh, stew. Also brought some kale with me tonight. Kale I'm just going to pick apart. I've already taken the stems out. This kale has a nice purple color to it. It's nice and rich. It's got a great sweet flavor to it as well. And again, kale from this time of year, it's going to be very sweet. A little bit hearty as well. We have local turnips. We have local baby fennel. Pearl onions that have been in storage but grown locally. And some of Roman Osaka's fantastic magic garlic. Another important part of Coco Van is bacon. Who doesn't love bacon? This bacon was made from a fresh slab of pork belly. We've cured it and smoked it at the Ryland Inn. In fact, if you come by the restaurant uh, Sunday mornings, you'll often smell the uh, um, apple wood and cherry wood that we use to smoke this bacon. So for this recipe, again, this is a rustic recipe. You have to keep that in mind. Um, we haven't been too fussy with the vegetables. Uh, we've kept them a little bit larger. We've kept more parts of the vegetable on there. And we want to do the same thing with the bacon. Um, again, this bacon was house cured and smoked. Uh, I don't want it to disappear inside the dish, but at the same time, I also don't want it to overpower the dish. Um, we know how smoky this is. And so I want to cut our, what are known as lardones. This is a cross section of the bacon. It's going to have both great texture and it's going to give great flavor. And more importantly, it's not going to disappear entirely into the dish. Again, this dish is going to cook for an hour and a half. So we don't want to put vegetables in there that are going to break apart in the first 25 minutes. So we are excited to put together a Coco Van tonight. Uh, Coco Van, of course, revolves around chicken. So we have really the area's best chicken in Grigstown Chicken sitting right here in front of us. So let's get started. So we have a Grigstown farm chicken. This is approximately three and a half to four pounds, this bird. And with any chicken, you have very tender breast meat and you have dark meat in the legs and the thighs. So what I want to do is, in order to cook this chicken uh, so that they're both tender and they're both flavorful, I want to separate them. So what I want to do is simply make a cut and begin to separate the legs from the breast. One of the favorite parts of a chicken is the oyster. It's right on the leg. Alright, so we have the legs. This is dark meat, this is more tough, it's going to require longer cooking time and that's what we're going to work with first. We're also going to uh, take off the wings uh, as the breast continue, as the, be the breast will be uh, a much quicker cooking time.
I'm wanting to use this for a month. <laughs> All right, so we have the breast. Uh, you can see that the skin is very uniform. Uh, there's not uh, uh, any discoloration in the skin. Uh, this is really high quality. And why this is important is that there's a lot of flavor in this skin. While many people uh, uh, like to have the skin taken off their chicken, I like to leave it on so long as we render it and cook it long enough in the pot before we add the other vegetables and liquid. So we find the keel bone. And we make a cut right down the keel bone. And that allows, allows us to take the breast right off the breastplate. We do the same thing on this side. All right, and that leaves us the chicken carcass. Of course, that's going to be uh, uh, used to get a lot of flavor. We'll make chicken stock out of that later. But what I also wanted to take off is the remainder of the wing bone, or rather the uh, wishbone. That's in the breast there. All right, so I'm going to separate uh, the wing bone from the breast. I'm going to leave a piece of meat on the wing bone because this is going to get cooked the same as the dark meat. Excellent. We're also going to uh, take the time now to cut this a little bit so that during the cooking process the meat will roll back against the bone leaving almost a little handle here uh, at the top. So one way to do this is to cut all the way around the bone and then scrape the bone away. We get a nice clean cut and a bone that's exposed and that'll just all pile down there when it braises and you'll end up with a nice piece like this. I'm going to separate the leg from the thigh. Do the same thing with the leg. and pops right off and you can see a nice clean bone and this will pop down and be a nice uh, presentation piece later. You can also debone the thighs completely. A big fan of the thigh, not a big fan of the thigh bone. I'm going to make sure that any other cartilage that's in there is completely gone as well. And with a nice thigh, boneless, there's the thigh bone. Wings, they're going to go in with that. One other way to have approached this would be to leave more of the bone on the breast. And that's what I'm going to do the second time here. I'm going to take the thighs off and the legs off again, making sure to get the oyster as well. Incidentally, at the Ryland Inn, we save all of our chicken oysters. Uh, we do uh, special events with them. We don't tell when we're going to uh, bring them, but we like to do special events with the uh, chicken oysters for sure. So what we're going to do is uh, make a straight cut down one side of the backbone, another one down the other. And that leaves us with the breast still on the breast plate. Uh, there's a lot of flavor in this uh, uh, breastplate here. So what I'm going to do is strike this bone uh, directly underneath the keel bone on either side of it. And that'll allow me to take out the keel bone in one piece. Assuming I can get around there. Okay. 
take the kill bone out in one piece, thus leaving the breastplate on, but no kill bone. Now we can separate the two sides of the breast. You gotta go through the wishbone, of course, when you do that. So you still wanna take off the other wishbone, or the two sides of the wishbone that are there. So, it's just showing that there's two different ways to, to butcher the chicken in the sense that sometimes you want to leave the breastplate on. This will keep the breast more uniform. Um, but we're going to show that we can cook the skin uh, um, long and slow and render it uh, and make it just as palatable as a boneless, uh, or rather as a skinless uh, breast. So the first part of any cocoa bond recipe, after you have everything cut, of course, it's going to be to brown all the chicken. It's incredibly important. Develop a lot of flavor. You also render the skin. It makes it much more uh, palatable and very enjoyable. We're browning our turnips. So then we get nice and flavorful. You can see the brown color that's uh, uh, starting to form on the edge of the turnips here. That's all nice sweet flavor. Same thing with the fennel. Starting to caramelize very, very lightly. And the sweet aroma of the chicken already caramelizing smells so fantastic. I don't want to cook the turnips all the way through. I just want to get a nice golden brown color on them. You can see that starting to develop. I'm going to take these out of the pan now. I can cook some other vegetables, and they're going to continue to cook in the in the cocoa bond itself. In any good cocoa bond recipe, you're always going to find some sort of wine. But in this recipe, we're going to take the wine and we're going to supplement it with some brandy. It's going to give the uh, uh, chicken some real character uh, and a little bit of a sweetness. Once the alcohol burns off, you're just going to be left with all the flavor. So, while I'm searing off the chicken breasts, which are going to cook separately from all the dark meat, I've compiled the dark meat here now with some of the bacon lardones, some of the pearl onions, the baby fennel, the beautiful scarlet turnip, and we're going to drill down some greens now. And in a minute, we're going to saute the final ingredient, and really one of the most important ingredients in here, which are the mushrooms. Mushrooms have such an incredible flavor and incredible complexity to any dish, and with chicken, mushrooms are a natural. garlic to the chicken breast while the chicken is rendering. It will give a great flavor and it will give enough time for the garlic to cook to become not only flavorful but actually sweet. One of the important things to remember about Coco Vaughn or any one pot meal is that there is flavor everywhere we look. Whether it's the flaming of the brandy or the caramelization of the uh, chicken in the bottom of the pot, um, the bacon fat, anything that uh, uh, is part of this recipe has, is there because it has incredible flavor. Okay, we'll let the garlic cook. And we'll start sauteing some mushrooms. And the smell of the sweet kale right now is fantastic. This is rich, nice flavor, really, really good. Yeah. So you want to pick a nice hearty mushroom that's going to withstand the cooking process. Beautiful.
Mushroom, mushrooms and garlic, great combination. So we have the roasted garlic in this pot, mushrooms that are starting to caramelize and brown real nice. Because the mushrooms have such a high water content, they're helping the flavor release from the bottom of the pan as well. So I've added a bouquet garni, or a uh, um, little uh, tied up bunch of herbs. This happens to have thyme, parsley, sage, a little bit of oregano. I'm just gonna bury that right in there as well. Right about now, I'm gonna add a little bit of smoked paprika. It's gonna help compound the smokiness of the bacon, as well as give it a nice uh, um, sweet pepper flavor, aroma. Also going to add some fennel seed. Going to get one more deglaze with brandy in this pot. smell the sweetness of that brandy. So Coco Van is going to need red wine. We have uh, a uh, container here, we have another pot here. <clears throat> We're going to use about three and a half cups of wine as soon as this alcohol burns off. Amazing assortment of kale, vegetables, brandy, red wine, a little bit of chicken stock. We're going to let that sit here now covered while we drink some wine. Okay, we have our, we have our two pots here. So in the back, we have our breasts that are simmering real nice. The aromatics in this are fantastic. I just opened it up and, and I got a little waft of cinnamon, a little bit of the pink peppercorn that we mentioned earlier. Really permeating that broth. Nice, warm flavors. Now let's see the real thing over here. Oh yeah. Man, that's looking real good. It's got a nice simmer going with it. All those flavors are working together. You can see all the vegetables. Very good. <laughs> My chickens are real happy. <laughs> real happy. Red wine, brandy, vegetables, terrific chicken, mushrooms, great friends. What else you need? We're preparing Coco Van tonight, a classic French dish. And with the sauce of this dish, it seems appropriate that there's some sort of noodle or a pasta. It's one of our favorite things to make over at the Ryland Inn is fresh pasta. So today I'm making a, an egg dough that we're going to roll out and cut into long, thin noodles, or long, really wide noodles, popper deli. So any good Coco Van is going to have a great sauce. This Coco Van has a sauce that's aromatic with cinnamon and great vegetables. So I'm making a popper deli noodle. This is made with eggs right from the quail farm. Flour, a little bit of water. I'm gonna knead it by hand. And while the coco van is cooking, we'll let this pasta dough rest. We'll roll it out. It'll take about 90 seconds to two minutes to cook. And it'll be fantastic right underneath the coco van. And run it through the pasta machine on the widest setting first. All right, so we have our beautiful popper deli noodles. 
So we're going to do two different uh, uh, presentations here, one that's a little bit more uh, uh, progressive and one that's uh, a little bit more rustic. So we've got a uh, small plate here that we're going to twirl some of this pasta into. And then the rest of the pasta is going to go right in here to a nice big classic presentation. Oh boy, man, the aroma, fantastic. This is not something you can develop over five minutes or ten minutes. This is something you have to develop over the course of an hour in an afternoon, a great snowy afternoon, perhaps, in the winter. So we've got some great vegetables here, right? We have some beautiful baby uh, fennel. Got a perfect purple carrot here that wants to be a part of this plate. We have here a little drumstick that came off the wing. I think that's just going to be perfect right in here. Of course, we have a pearl onion. We have the all important mushrooms giving us a great deal of flavor and umami. Thanks to Shibumi mushrooms for those mushrooms. Of course, we talked about the kale and how sweet and rich that is. I'm gonna put a small piece of that on here as well. Let's pick out a nice one, yeah. Just a small piece, it's gonna be real nice. And of course, the, the, the main element of the coco van is the sauce. And while we tossed the pasta with the sauce earlier, more of this sauce here now is really what's going to make this absolutely spectacular. Let's see, what other goodies do we have in here? Oh, we got the bacon. Yep, can't forget the bacon. You know, the one thing about the Coco Vaughn is that, you know, from a color spectrum, uh, you're going to get a lot of uh, uh, earth tones, sure. which, you know, uh, is, is important to recognize that, you know, if you're looking for explosive color, you're not going to see so many here, but certainly there are the earth tones that you're going to see in the fall. But that's where the fresh herbs come in. So I would add a couple of fresh parsley leaves to compound the fresh parsley that was in this dish earlier. Of course we have some fresh picked thyme as well and oregano. A little bit of fresh cracked black pepper, some New York State sea salt, and uh, I think we have a nice little mid-course, <laughs> probably what we would serve this as, of uh, uh, Coco Vaughn. I mean, you have all the vegetables here, you have a nice uh, uh, delicate drumstick, it's just going to fall right off the bone, and that's going to be that presentation. So we've been putting this dish together. You can see, look at the look at the the, the the leg here. I mean, it has really just shrunk down into a beautiful uh, bite-sized piece. It's going to fall right off the bone. We have the boneless thigh, the wing, and of course the breast, which we started which with that has a, a slightly different texture and a little bit uh, uh, shorter cooking time. So now it's just time to assemble some of the uh, beautiful vegetables that we uh, so meticulously sourced earlier on. Again, keep in mind, this is a rustic, hearty dish. You know, things that can, can sit in the kitchen for two or three hours during the afternoon and just, you know, the, the aroma, the richness of flavor, especially this time of year with the temperature being a little bit cooler, this is a, an outstanding dish. We've got some of the kale, the pearl onions. Oh yeah, I think there we are. So again, I wouldn't shy away from the fresh herbs. Uh, I, Always in my cooking, I like to use fresh herbs where I can layer the flavors. So we'll start with herbs uh, in the chicken stock or uh, in the cooking process itself, and then more of those fresh herbs right at the end that you really activate the oils when you uh, chomp down on it. Some more fresh cracked black pepper and some New York State sea salt, and you are ready to enjoy 
Coco Bon. Okay, before we sit down. Well, at the uh, end of every cooking session, there's this. There is the opportunity to, yeah. There's the opportunity to sit down with friends. And this is the, this is the food industry here in Central Jersey. We've got chefs here, we've got farmers, we've got farmers markets people, we've got farmers and managers. We've got pretty much everybody, the whole family. It's a wonderful, wonderful meal you've put together, Chris. Thank you so much. Jason, it's my pleasure. Thanks, George. Thank you, George. I just want to say thank you to everybody who has supported Grigstown Quail Farm in, since 1975. And we'll continue to do a good job and raise the best birds and cook the best birds we can. And I want to thank everybody that's here tonight. Amen. Thank you. Here, here. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Coco Bon, try this amazing dish. For a limited time, the Greekstown Farm Kitchen is offering our version of Coco Bon, as taught by Julia Child. Order your servings at 908-359-5218, extension 2. Call us and place your order before Tuesday, February 28th for pickup on Saturday, March 4th or Sunday, March 5th. Call us at 908-359-5218. 5218 extension 2. Town Chicken Channel. Town Chicken Channel.